In this video, we're looking at proving that things are true using algebra. The first question says prove algebraically that the sum of three consecutive integers is always a multiple of three. So sum means added together, consecutive means in a row, and integers are whole numbers. So prove that three whole numbers in a row, so 3, 4 and 5, or 10, 11 and 12, when they're added up is always a multiple of 3. So if we call a number, any number, n, the one after it is going to be n plus 1, and the one after that will be n plus 2. So these three, these are three consecutive integers and we're going to do the sum of them so we're going to add them together so we're going to do n plus m plus 1 plus n plus 2 and if we collect like terms we've got 3 n's plus 3 and we can show that this is a multiple of 3 because we can factorize 3 out of this so it's 3 times n plus 1. So it's in the 3 times table because it can be expressed as 3 times something. So we have proved that the sum of 3 consecutive integers is always a multiple of 3. Here's a question for you to try. If you feel able to, give this a go now. Otherwise, just keep watching. So the question says, prove algebraically that the sum of two consecutive integers is always odd. So again, two consecutive integers, if we say the first one is called n, the next one is n plus 1. n plus 1 is always the number after n. So if n was 10, n plus 1 is 11. And we're adding them again, it's the sum again. So what do we have? We've got n plus n plus 1, which is 2n plus 1. How do we know this is odd? Because 2n is the 2 times table. So 2n is even. We can say 2n is an even number. The 2 times table is the list of all the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And one more than the two times table is always odd. The next question, the next example, says prove algebraically that the sum of two consecutive odd numbers is always a multiple of four. So two consecutive odd numbers. If we say our first odd number is 2n plus 1. So 2n is the 2 times table. One more than that is an odd number. One more than the 2 times table is always odd. We want a consecutive one. So what's the next odd number? The next odd number will be 2 more than this. So 2n plus 3. So these are two consecutive odd numbers. If n was 1, there would, they would be 3 and 5. If n was 10, they'd be 21 and 23. These are two consecutive odd numbers, and we're doing the sum of them. We're adding them together. So 2n and 2n make 4n. 1 and 3 make 4. So we've got 4n plus 4, and we can show that this is a multiple of 4 by factorizing 4 out of it. So we have 4 times n plus 1. So 4 times something is always a multiple of 4. And one for you to try. Actually, I'll do this as another example. Prove algebraically that the product of two even numbers is always a multiple of 4. So these are two different even numbers. So if we say an even number is 2n, 
2 times anything would be an even number. But we need to do the product, which is a multiplication, a times, with another even number. So we can just use a different letter. So 2m. 2n times 2m. These are two different even or two even numbers. So if we times them together, 2n times 2m is 4mn. And we can show this is a multiple of 4. Well, it is a multiple of 4 because it's 4 times something. So it is a multiple of 4. The next one, prove algebraically that the difference, that means a takeaway, between the squares, squared, of two consecutive odd numbers is always a multiple of 8. So we want two consecutive odd numbers. So if we have 2n plus 1, the one after it, the next odd number is 2n plus 3. So we're going to square them and take them away. So I'm going to put the biggest one first. 2n plus 3 squared. Take away 2n plus 1 squared. So let's simplify this. Well, let's expand these brackets. We've got 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 3 minus 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So if we expand the first set, 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times 3 is 6n. 3 times 2n is 6n. And 3 threes are 9. Now we need to be careful expanding the second bracket. Well, we need to make sure we don't forget this minus sign. So we're taking away all of this. So I'm going to put it in a bracket. We're taking away all of it. So 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times 1 is 2n. 1 times 2n is 2n. And 1, 1 is 1. So let's collect the like terms. We've got 4n squared plus 12n plus 9. Take away 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So we're taking away all of this second bracket. So how can we take away all of this second bracket, all of this bracket? We could either think of this as expanding a bracket. So we've got minus all of it, which is the same as minus 1 times all of it. So we can change all of the signs in here. Or you could think of it as taken away individually. So 4n squared, take away the first term. 12n, take away the second term. And 9, take away the third term. Either way, we get 4n squared plus 12n plus 9 minus 4n squared minus 4n minus 1. So 4n squared, take away 4n squared is nothing. 12n, take away 4n is 8n. And 9 take away 1 is 8. So we've got 8n plus 8. We're proving it's always a multiple of 8. So it's 8 times n plus 1. So because we can factorise out 8, that means it is a multiple of 8. 8 times n plus 1 will always be in the 8 times table. And one for you to try, so give this one a go. Prove algebraically that the difference between the squares of two consecutive integers, so two consecutive integers, so they're n and m plus 1, the difference between their squares is equal to their sum. So the sum is easy. So n plus n plus 1 is 2n plus 1. So let's do the difference between the squares of them. So we'll do the biggest one first. 
n plus 1 squared minus n squared. So n plus 1 squared is n plus 1 times n plus 1. So n times n is n squared. n times 1 is n. 1 n is n. And 1 1 is 1. So we've got... So let's collect like terms. We've got n squared take away n squared, which is nothing. n plus n is 2n. And we've got a plus 1. So we've got 2n plus 1 is equal to 2n plus 1. So that is true. We've proved it. Okay, two questions to finish up. So pause the video, give them a go, and press play when you're ready for the answers. Question one says prove algebraically that the sum, so adding, of the squares of two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of four. So the sum of the squares, so our two consecutive even numbers, so an even number is 2n, and the one after it is 2n plus 2. And we're doing the sum of their squares. So we're squaring them and adding them together. So we've got 2n squared plus 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 2. 2n squared, or 2n times 2n, is 4n squared. And then expanding these brackets, 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times 2 is 4n. 2 times 2n is 4n. And 2 twos are 4. So collecting like terms, we've got 8n squared plus 8n plus 4. And we can prove it's always a multiple of 4 by factorising out 4. So it's 4 times 2n squared plus 2n plus 1. So 4 times something is always a multiple of 4. Question 2. Prove that 3n, 3n plus 1 squared minus 3n minus 1 squared is always a multiple of 12. So we've got 3n plus 1 times 3n plus 1 take away 3n minus 1 times 3n minus 1. So this is the one where we've got to be careful of this minus sign. So we're taking away all of this, taking away the whole thing. Let's expand these brackets. 3n times 3n is 9n squared. 3n times 1 is 3n. 1, 3n is 3n, and 1, 1 is 1. And we're taking away all of this, so I'm going to put it in a big bracket. 3n times 3n is 9n squared. 3n times negative 1 is negative 3n. Negative 1 times 3n is negative 3n. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So collect the like terms. So that gives us 9n squared plus 6n plus 1 minus all of 9n squared minus 6n plus 1. So we're taking away all of this second bracket. So you can think of it as multiplying through by negative 1, changing the signs in all of these terms. So it's going to be minus 9n squared plus 6n minus 1. So what does that leave us? 9n squared take away 9n squared is nothing. 6n plus 6n is 12n. And 1 minus 1 is nothing. So 12n is the 12 times table. So it is a multiple of 12.